conditions of the minutes were requested, so they will be considered approved. If you have any questions, please use the Q&A feature found at the bottom menu of your screen. Please submit all questions through this feature as we will not be monitoring the hand raise or chat features during this meeting. We will answer your questions after the presentations before the conclusion of the meeting. I want to start first by acknowledging that we are holding this meeting under rather extraordinary circumstances. As we meet, many of our members across the world, particularly in Europe and now in the United States, are focused on keeping their hospitals open, caring for the most vulnerable and saving lives. The entire world is facing an unprecedented crisis as a global pandemic has firmly taken a hold of our planet, impacting the health and well-being of many, disrupting economies and interrupting normal patterns of life and livelihood. As I stated in my presidential address, I firmly believe that our courage and resilience will get us through this. And the fact that there are at least 75 and rising members of our society in attendance today convinces me that you have confidence in our future, knowing that like many adversities that we have faced as humanity, we will look back on this time with some sadness, but with a firmer resolve to prepare for a brighter tomorrow. Let me now acknowledge and celebrate a phenomenally successful year for our organization. I will share just a few highlights in the interest of time. Had we been in San Francisco, we would have had record-breaking attendance at ENDO 2020. I want to thank and acknowledge the tremendous work of the members of the annual meeting steering committee who put together an outstanding program led by the overall chair, Dr. Carlin Smith, the basic science chair, Dr. Stephen Hamis, the Clinical Science Chair, Dr. David D'Alessio, and Dr. Marilyn Drews, the Clinical Practice Chair. As I shared earlier, much of their work will come to fruition. The MSC Chairs of ENDO 2020 are already collaborating with the incoming Chairs of ENDO 2021 to put together an annual meeting next year that will incorporate many elements of ENDO 2020 with the best of what will be planned for ENDO 2021. I'm also very pleased to share with you that we will launch ENDO Online 2020. We have received vocal and enthusiastic feedback from many of our endocrine investigators, clinicians, and trainees who have indicated a strong desire to continue to advance clinical knowledge and exposure to emerging science. The Endocrine Society will virtually deliver content that our members need with a projected launch in June with live and on-demand content. ENDO Online 2020 will feature on-demand sessions focused on clinical topics, live sessions dedicated to basic science oral presentations, continuing medical education sessions, programming for early career professionals, and a digital exhibit hall. We are hopeful for a respite from COVID-19 by this fall, and we will be working to support the educational needs of our clinical colleagues. Therefore, we are not delaying the planning necessary to deliver an outstanding clinical meeting in September and October in the form of CEU and Endocrine Board Review, which will be held in Miami and San Diego, respectively. I want to make a few comments on our commitment to supporting the needs and aspirations of our basic science members, particularly our PhD members who are not clinicians. Given that fundamental research is the bedrock on which our society has been built and will continue to be, we will do this in a number of ways by continuing to enhance opportunities for basic scientists to meet and share their data in novel ways, to augment basic science programming and pathways as we piloted last year, expanded this year, and will continue to expand in our future annual meetings. We're also committed to working with the nominating committee and the soon to be president elect, Carl Weisham, to increasing basic science representation on our board and our committees and to focus on the needs of this very important constituency in all of our advocacy efforts. As president, I had many occasions to be proud of our intense focus and efforts in advocacy, not only in working towards important policy agendas such as insulin pricing and research funding in the United States, but also in advocating for laws that enshrine protection in our communities to minimize the effects of endocrine disrupting chemicals that were recently passed in the European Union. 
our journals have had a strong year under the guidance of our editors in chief, our publication staff, and the publications core committee. There should be no doubt that the Endocrine Society remains committed to ensuring that our journals continue to grow and remain a vital repository of the best work in endocrine science, endocrine clinical investigation, clinical guidelines, and position papers and authoritative reviews. I want to also celebrate our organization's commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion. We would have celebrated at, at Endo 2020 a 25 year long commitment towards increasing diversity in endocrinology and our commitment to caring for and advocating for marginalized and vulnerable populations, such as patients with gender dysphoria. I am proud of our investments in and commitment to early career development, such as our FLAIR program, the Early Career Forum, and the Global Leadership Academy, which we will convene again at next year's endo. There are many additional things that I could talk about, such as the accolades of our members, our distinguished laureate awardees, our community outreach, for example, endocares, but there is some business that we have to conduct. I now call on Dr. Dolores Schoback to give the report of the Secretary Treasurer. Thank you, Dr. Abel. As Secretary Treasurer, I would like to review the Society's 2019 financial statements with you. I am pleased to report to you that your society continues to remain financially strong. In 2019, the society ended the year with approximately $30 million in total operating revenue and a narrow net operating surplus of about $20,000 before strategic plan initiatives and building operations investments, restricted fund spending, and investment returns were accounted for. Much of the Society's 2019 financial success is due to our more than 18,000 members, a truly international body from over 120 countries. The $1.2 million invested on a strategic plan and office condominium and $100,000 released from restriction, combined with the $7.5 million, about 20% market gain in our investments, resulted in ending the year with a net surplus of more than $6.2 million. As we progress through our second century, it's important for you as members to know that the Society's diverse business model and its track record of prudent financial management have built a solid foundation and provide the means for us to make investments in future initiatives to advance our strategic plan while also building a strong reserve even in times of market volatility and uncertainty. Because of our strong financial position, the society has earmarked more than, more than $14 million since 2002 for strategic plan initiatives. These investments have allowed the society to provide new programs and services for us, its members, to expand our global outreach and increase our public awareness and advocacy efforts. As examples, initiatives such as our clinical practice guidelines, our scientific statements, the global EDC advocacy, the early career forum, and many, many others have all been funded by the society's operating surpluses and positive investment returns over many years. Your society's balance sheet remains very strong with total assets of almost $69 million, the highest in the history of the society and a fund balance of over $43 million, also the highest of all time. 75% of the society's assets are in cash and investments, which are highly liquid. Our strong financial position permitted us to purchase a 34,000 square foot office condominium in Washington, DC in 2013. Relocating to Washington helps to further the society and advance our strategic plan. It enables us to be an even more vibrant and visible leader and allows us to better pursue our mission. Our contributions to the scientific and policy conversations are significant. By owning property in the district, we not only strengthen our capacity to fulfill our mission, but we also strengthen our financial foundation. I'm also pleased to report that your membership dues account for only 11% of the society's 2019 total revenue. This is noteworthy because membership dues at other comparable societies represent more than 34% of their total revenues. 
This highlights the great value that we, as members of the Endocrine Society, receive for each of our dues dollars. Now, during these challenging and volatile financial times, we are very pleased the Society has a diverse business model and the financial resources to be in the position to have raised dues in only five of the past 14 years for our members. In closing, I'd like you to know your board of directors remains committed to preserving, protecting, and sustaining the financial strength of the society so we can continue to be a leader in the field of medicine and provide the very best science, education, and service to all our members. Thank you, Dr. Schoback. I would like to recognize our retiring officers and board members and wish to thank all of them, in particular, Dr. Susan Mandel, our immediate past president for her dedication, leadership, and mentorship during her term as an officer of the society. I also want to thank our retiring committee chairs whose names appear on the slide that you're now seeing. Your dedication to the society is truly appreciated and we thank you for your service. At this time, I would ask that we take a moment to pay our respects to the society's deceased members with a moment of silence. Thank you. As I close my presidential year, some might think that this could be described as an annus horribilis. To the contrary, as I briefly outlined in my summary of society achievements, and as I summarize in my presidential address that was sent to all of our members via, via video link last week, this has been a year that has proven the resilience and commitment of our members worldwide and the devotion of our society's staff. By any measure, we have had a successful year. And even although as an organization, we faced some diversity, and so, sorry, some adversity, we will emerge stronger than ever and are poised to remain the authoritative voice for endocrine research and practice globally. I have been impressed and moved by the outpouring of support that I have received since we made the difficult decision to cancel Endo 2020. I have been impressed by our quick pivot to launch Endo Online 2020. I have been energized by the motivation of all of our members, but particularly our early career members to develop robust programming geared towards trainees for Endo Online 2020. I've been moved by the swift decision of the annual meeting steering committee 2021 to formally collaborate with the AMSC 2020 to jointly develop Endo 2021 which I believe will represent the most exuberant celebration of endocrinology worldwide in a generation. So please mark your calendars and please come. Let this be a record-breaking meeting. It has been remarkable to watch our community mobilize to address the current pandemic by establishing an online forum to develop and disseminate best practices, which continues to grow and add content daily. The JCE and them rapidly published our response to COVID-19 as endocrinologists and diabetologists on March 31st. Many of our members across the world have mobilized within their respective health systems to address the pandemic directly or indirectly by redesigning their practices to ensure resource allocation to the, to the pandemic and to minimize the risk of transmission or exposure of our patients. As you have heard from Dr. Schoback, the financial stewardship of the current and past and prior boards places the society in a strong financial position weather this storm and to advance the core tenets of our strategic plan. As president, I witnessed and experienced a remarkable level of engagement of the members of our board, our committee members, and the officers of the society. I want to thank and acknowledge the executive leadership team who are competently managing the affairs of the society in collaboration with the executive committee and with loyal support of our staff. Therefore, Gary, as I pass this gavel over to you, I can declare unequivocal, unequivocally that not only do you have my unwavering support, but I speak for all of us 
that we all have your back as you take the reins of this great organization. As such, Gary, it is my pleasure and distinct honor to pass the gavel to you, our president-elect, Dr. Gary Hammer. Thank you, Dale. As our team captain passes me the baton here through the ether, I can't help but notice that this gavel in other contexts is called a mallet or a hammer. This is apropos because like family, I have always held the society close and will take seriously the privilege of serving as president during this unprecedented time. But a word first about Dr. Abel. On top of being remarkably able, Dale has proven to be nothing less than spectacular as a team leader. Thank you, Dale, for reminding us all what servant leadership looks like in action and for teaching us all the value of calm, steady, deliberate strategy and implementation. Exemplary comes to mind when reflecting on your term and your execution of our strategic plan during an incredible, albeit uniquely challenging year. So again, thank you. We will do our very best to uphold the standard of excellence that you have set for the Office of the Presidency and for the society. We certainly have a busy 12 months ahead, all under the increasing challenge of this unprecedented pandemic that has and will continue to change how we do all of what we do, personally and professionally. In a society committed to metabolic and endocrine health, where relationships are central to our education and research platforms and to our clinical care mission, our recent need for physical isolation need not and must not imply disengagement. Indeed, it actually demands more conscious and more purposeful level of connection. And while I won't provide a laundry list of how the endocrine society is adapting and will continue to rise to the challenges of our time, know that we will be engaging deeply and increasingly online with you all. Facing both inward towards our members and outward to the global community, we will provide timely content pertinent to the crisis, but also to our established business of advocacy, education, clinical guidance, and research. All as we temporarily transition to or augment our efforts through virtual engagement. So while nothing close to business as usual, we will be nimble and adapt to the needs of our members, our patients, and the world as we move forward. The importance of shared vision is best reflected in a short phrase repeated time and again by famed Michigan coach, Bo Schembechler, simply the team, the team, the team. I'm deeply honored to be part of such a passionate and committed group of Endocrine Society staff and member leaders. And so it is with great pleasure that I welcome the new officers and board members who will begin their term at the conclusion of this meeting. So now Dale and I and Dolores will take a few minutes to answer some of your questions, if there are any. Um, and if we do not have enough time to answer all of them, we will collect all these questions and send a written response to all of you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Gary. And there are a couple of questions which have um, come in online. I think both of them are somewhat related, so I'll read them both. Um, the first question was, will the current market crash impact negatively on the society and the strategic plan? And the second question, um, which was preceded by a comment, which is uh, many thanks to Susan, Dale, Gary, and Carol, and Dolores for your leadership and engagement. Thank you. Um, Dolores, can you provide insight into the effects of our financial outlook for recent changes in the stock market and the decision to cancel end of 2020? Sure, very important question, and we're watching this very, very um, diligently day by day and, and are uh, talking with our investment uh, advisors um, all the time. So yes, it, it will certainly affect uh, how we conduct our business and 
and the size of our financial reserves. But I think that we will remain committed to our core principles, which are embodied in the current strategic plan and will do everything to preserve the mission and the core principles um, uh, of the society. Um, and we do have a diverse business model. Our meetings are important. As you saw, our dues are important. And uh, all of our educational efforts, including very importantly, our publications, will, will we hope, uh, tide us through this difficult time. And I'll just also um, add, and I'm sure that you'd all agree, that um, because of the, the management of our, our finances over the years, we've really um, entered this difficult period from a position of strength, not from a position of, of, of weakness. Um, our reserves in hand have allowed us to have more than a year's worth of operating revenue if all of our revenue went to zero, which I think is gonna be unlikely. Second, um, you know, we are also um, pursuing an insurance claim um, as indemnity against the loss of the um, meeting. So we don't necessarily believe that we will have to face all of the liabilities of that cancellation. Um, yes, there's, there's um, a second, well, two, two questions. First of all, is there any chance for CEO to, that CEU 2020 will be canceled as well? Um, I would, I, I would say we are planning. We're moving forward with, with the planning for it. Clearly, there's a, there's a lot of things which are which are unknown, and um, you know we are watching everything as 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 it evolves. As of now, we are planning for CEU to take place. Um, the next question that came in: Can you say a few words about the departure of Barbara Bird Keenan? Why did she leave, and what is the plan for putting a new CEO in place? So I think that what I'm, I can say is that there will be um, a search committee put in place to identify uh, a new CEO and that the search committee will begin its deliberations um, shortly. Um, we are very grateful to um, Barbara for her time in the Endocrine Society for um, what she did to really um, increase the engagement um, of the board and, and we thank her very much for her service. Thank you, Dale. If there are no more questions, let me conclude by reminding us of first um, of two events that will unite, lead, and grow our endocrine community. As we heard, Endo Online 2020 will take place June 8th through June 22nd with a mix of both on-demand and live programming. This will represent the largest virtual meeting to date ever held for endocrine researchers and clinicians. N next year's annual meeting, Endo 2021, will be held March 20th through the 23rd next year in San Diego, California, and will serve as a two-year celebration of all things endocrine innovation and clinical care. Now, in the meantime, uh, as we look forward with courage and compassion, we wish you all well, and please, Stay safe. With that, I now adjourn the annual business meeting of the Endocrine Society. Bye for now. <laughs>